Hi, this is Dr. Korzynski. This video was inspired by a question emailed to me from a patient asking for a little bit more specific guidance with regard to use of ice after knee replacement surgery. And although I will show you how to use it on your knee, this would also be applicable to use on the shoulder or other body part that's either been injured or immediately after surgery. I've explained elsewhere how I recommend rehabilitating your knee replacement, but I think that the use of ice is extremely helpful, particularly early on after an injury or after surgery, but because the knee replacement rehab tends to be fairly inflammatory, its use can still be quite helpful for up to six weeks or more after surgery. And so to begin with, um, I'm going to show you the traditional way to use ice and typically we would use ice for about 20 minutes on and then 20 minutes off. It's important when icing not to put the ice directly on your skin but to have a thin layer of some sort of fabric in between. It's very important not to get frostbite and so frostbite will look like a gray area on the skin where it's actually frozen. Um, it's normal to have a little bit of redness on the skin after using ice but it should never become completely insensate or the skin should never look gray. If you are noticing that happening, you're icing for too long or maybe wrapping too tight or you need a little bit more material in between the ice and your skin. So the goal here is not to freeze the tissues but to reduce inflammation by cooling the tissues. And so let's start with this. This is a traditional ice pack a bunch of ice from your refrigerator in a plastic bag. And so I would use this while I was stretching if I was rehabilitating my knee, uh, particularly when working on extension. Just placing it on the knee can work perfectly fine, but as you can see, it can fall off. Uh, you could potentially use a bigger ice bag, put some water in there as well, but you would rest it on your knee. And then, you know, maybe in this case, you'd wrap it with an ace bandage so that it stabilizes a little bit and I would leave that in place for the full time you're stretching up to 20 minutes or so just in this position. So you could sit and relax, just let that ice pack do its, do its thing to reduce uh, inflammation on your knee while you're stretching. And so that's a very simple one. It's cheap and it's available. The downside is that it's a little bit awkward. It flops around. Sometimes it'll leak. Um, but it is effective, it's tried and true, and so that's the first option. Something like this is another option. This is a commercially available cold pack. This is placed in your freezer, it gets very, very cold. If you have more than one, you could cycle in between. And as you can see, this sits on your knee a little bit nicer, it's lower profile. The same uh, concerns apply uh, when using an ice pack like this which is not to place it directly on your skin and make sure you don't get frostbite. Uh, it could be just rested on here or you could do the same thing with a bandage where you'd wrap it on and uh, apply a little bit of compression at the same time. And I would tend to leave this on while doing extension stretching for 20 minutes at a time. Again, look at your skin in between icing sessions to make sure it's not getting frostbite. Again, a little bit of redness on the skin is normal, but at no point should it ever become gray. Usually an ice pack like this will not be cold anymore after 20 minutes or so, and uh, taking a little bit of time in between, your knee will remain cold. You can work on flexion exercises. Ice is dose dependent, which means that the more you use it, the better. And from the surgeon's perspective, we can really tell usually when patients have been diligent about icing, because the knee is less swollen, it's less bruised, less inflamed, and usually patients are coming in with superior range of motion. So that's option number two. So this brings us to option number three. And a device like this is commercially available. There are a variety of different brands and some off-brand versions. And it involves a cooling device with a pump and a pad like this that you would apply to your knee. And so the way this would go is that you would wrap this on with some compression.
like this. And then this would hook up to the machine. This machine is filled with ice and water. And then the pump will circulate that cold fluid around your knee. And the nice thing about this is that it's relatively flexible. So you could stretch in flexion and extension. And because it's not pure ice, and there's some warming that happens here, it usually doesn't get quite as cold as pure ice, so I believe there's less risk of developing frostbite using a system like this. Uh, you still need to be very careful that you don't and monitor your skin. Again, a little bit of redness is okay, but it should never become gray or completely numb, um, which would indicate that maybe you're doing, using it too much. But this device could be used for much longer than 20 minutes at a time. In fact, you could really leave it on continuously as long as you're not getting frostbite. So this to me is the most convenient, most flexible, and allows you to use it for longer durations. And because of that, I think the actual efficacy of using a machine like this is superior to the other options. I hope that answers your question. If I had, was using a machine like this, I would leave it on as, as often as I could for as long as possible. If using either an ice pack or a, a commercial available cold pack, I would use that 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. And I would do that sequence back and forth as often as you can, certainly whenever it's inflamed, definitely after therapy, even during stretching as I've demonstrated here. But basically the more you ice, the better. Find the most convenient way for you to do it and use it as frequently as you can, always avoiding frostbite. And I would do that for really the first six weeks minimum after knee replacement surgery or rotator cuff surgery. Thank you for the question. I think it was an excellent question. I hope this helps clarify the use of ice or cryotherapy, as it's also called. And if you have any other questions or concerns, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer your question. Thank you.